This will be for the con assignment, zeros of polynomials, factored form. So just some notes real quick. Uh, they're, tell, they're asking us, they're telling us a polynom polynomial P has zeros when X equals these numbers. Okay, the zeros are basically the X-intercepts of the graph. And the X-intercepts are where the graph crosses or intercepts the X-axis. Okay, so this is the X-axis right here. And the reason they are called the zeros is because if you drew a line on the x-axis, if you drew a line on the x-axis, the equation of that line would be y equals zero, okay? So basically, that's why they call it the zeros, because the x-axis is y equals zero. So, all of the answers are in y equals form, okay? And the way you would find the zeros for each equation is to set the equation equal to zero, okay? By setting this equal to zero, it's the same as setting y equal to zero, all right? But we are not going to necessarily do that for each of the answers because there are four choices. So we basically have to work backwards. And one more thing I want to mention, remember that anything multiplied by zero equals zero. Okay, so if you set this equal to zero, then this portion could be zero, or this portion could be zero, or this portion could be zero. And that's because anything times zero will equal zero. So it works if any one of these three equals zero. So in each of these cases here, we have three zeros, and in each of these cases, I want to set it equal to zero. All right? I want to have it equal zero. So I'm going to start with x equals negative two. All right, and I want that to equal zero, so I'm going to add two on both sides. Here we have x plus 2, bring down the equal sign, and negative 2 plus 2 is 0, okay? I am going to keep the portion on the left, that equals 0, okay? So x plus 2 is going to be one of our factors. Now let's go to x equals 1 third. Okay, I want that to equal zero, so I'm going to do minus one-third on both sides. Here we have x minus one-third. Bring down the equal sign, and one-third minus one-third is zero. Now there's one small problem here. Their answers might not have any fractions, all right? So in order to get rid of the fractions, you just multiply both sides by the denominator of the fraction, okay? So we can see the denominator is a three. So I am going to multiply both sides here by three, all right? I'll do a three right here and a three on the other side. Distributing the 3, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1, and 0 times 3 is 0, okay? Again, I am going to keep the part that is on the left-hand side. So 3x minus 1 is also going to be one of the factors. And then finally, the last one, x equals 3. Okay, if I do minus 3 on both sides, I have, I have x minus 3, bring down the equals, and 3 minus 3 is 0. All right, once again, I keep the part that's on the left. So in the answers here, we want x plus 2, 
3x minus 1 and x minus 3. All right, let's check out the answers here. These are all positive. This one has x plus 3. We want x minus 3. Here we have x plus 2. We have it. x minus 3. We have it. And 3x minus 1. We have it. So it's answer C. All right, so it seems like a lot of work, but some of these you can really just do in your head, all right? Here we have x equals negative 2, while well, x plus 2 is going to be one of the factors. See here, if you took the negative 2 and plugged it in right here, you would get 0. If you took x equals 3 and plugged it in right here, you would get 0. Okay, so really these... Some of them you might be able to do in your head. The only tricky part is the fraction one. And if you want to double check before you select your answer, all you have to do is set this equal to zero. Okay, if I set this equal to zero, this right here would be negative two. This right here would be positive three. This right here would be one third. Okay, and those three numbers match the three numbers they gave us in the beginning. Okay, so in this case, we don't have to work backwards. We want to find the zeros of this polynomial. So it's actually very easy. You just take this whole thing and set it equal to zero. Okay, this is in y equals form. So it's the same thing as setting y equal to zero. And anything multiplied by 0 equals 0. So this can be 0, or this can be 0, or this can be 0, all right? So let's do each one. x minus 1 equals 0. And, of course, x is just 1. Okay, you can do that in your head. 1 minus 1 is 0. Next up, x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, I can do that in my head. x equals negative 3. Why is that? Because negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. And finally, the last one, 2x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, subtract, we want to solve for x, so subtract 1 from both sides. The 1's cancel. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Dividing both sides by 2, we have a negative 1 half. If you like decimals better, you can say negative 0 0.5, same thing. So we have the three x-intercepts, or the zeros, okay? We want to plot these on the graph. All right, so these are all x-intercepts, so you want to go to the x-axis. See the x-axis right here? All right, x equals 1 is the first one. Go to x equals 1, and just left-click on it. Next one is x equals negative 3. Okay, on your x-axis, go to x equals negative 3, left-click on it. And finally, x equals negative 1 half or negative 0 0.5. All right, this is 0, this is negative 1, so negative 1 half would have to be right there. So that's it, three answers, three x-intercepts. All right, if you make a mistake with one of the dots, you can just left-click on it and drag it to this trash can. Or maybe you can just left-click on it and drag it to the correct place. All right, last one. It says a polynomial P is graphed. And we have our graph of P right here in blue. And they want to know what could be the equation of P. All right, so this is very similar to the first one we did. The only difference is you have to get the zeros from the graph. All right, so the way you get the zeros 
is that you go to the x-axis, okay? And you look at the intercepts. So here we have one at x equals negative five. And then the next one is right here. That's between negative one and negative two, so negative 1.5. And finally, the last one is right here at positive two. So we have three x-intercepts, all right? And now, like we did in the first case, we want to match those to the equations, all right? One of the equations. So let's see here if I can make some room. And really, some of this you can do in your head, okay? So we have x equals negative 5, right? But I want to set that equal to 0, so I'm going to add 5 on both sides. On the left, I have x plus 5. Bring down the equals, and 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, you keep the part to the left of the equation. Next up is negative 1.5. X equals negative 1.5. Okay, add 1.5 to both sides in order to make it equal to zero. And we have X plus 1.5. Bring down the equals, and this here equals zero, okay? Now, again, they might not have fractions, okay? In order to get rid of 1.5, 1.5 is the same as three halves, okay? And we said multiply by the denominator, so the denominator would be a two. So I'm going to multiply by two on both sides, distributing two times x is 2x, 2 times 1.5 is positive 3, and that equals 0. Keep the part to the left of the 0. And then finally, the last one, x equals 2. Okay, setting it equal to 0, I'm going to do a minus 2 on both. x minus 2, bring down the equals. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have three factors. x plus 5, 2x plus 3, and x minus 2. Look at answer A. x plus 5, 2x plus 3, x minus 2. So that's it. Okay, like I said, some of these you can do in your head, okay? You don't necessarily have to write all of this out, all right? And notice, all, they, all we do in most cases is just change the sign. For the negative 5, we have x plus 5. For the positive 2, we have x minus 2. And for the negative 1.5, we have x plus 1.5, okay? And if you multiply both sides by 2, you'll get 2x plus 3. 